I got into mining in 2004 with my husband. I joined him and I became his secretary, accountant. I took over and I became the director. The people around him, they are all men. They didn't like the idea. So anytime I try even to give instructions, sometimes they won't even mind me. It came to a point that I realized that anytime I come and tell them, do this, I have to say, director says, that's my husband, says, you should do this. First, you need to say, and you might bear my and about to me yet. And if I know my can say, oh, my young man can say, you might hear you, and you can't say, oh, but Miss Tati, you want to cry, and I'm saying, man, man, can't hear you know, a man named to your bar now, Bumma. A who sell your bar, we are here, Jumana, near Pintu, selling it. A beau ha, oh, oh, quite Juma, I say. If you're a woman who wants to go into mining, or if you're a woman who is into mining, you have to be hard. Either than that, the men will walk over you. Women play quite a significant role in the mining industry, especially those who get opportunity to be employed in the supply chain of the, of the mine companies in terms of participation in local procurement processes. Women are also involved directly as miners. So in the artisanal small-scale mining sector, we have quite a significant number of women who are also engaged in that sector. Women have also been contributing in terms of formal employment into the large-scale mining sector, taking up such challenging roles that traditionally we don't see women taking. So as engineers and technical people in the large-scale mining corporations, that we work in. Let me to excavator. Me to me at the tenet yeni biago so. But I say, oh yeah, now be sure we say a bare meduma in the urban. But I remember what they met to me aye. The time be an me place me angasa me yedi. They say you cut a corner first and then you miss a bare mango and to me to excavator. Me only ma be bila omu chibi. Omu chibi those is near the at the coach at the coach be be kwe yeduma. Also at the community level, they serve as custodians of our community and providing those services that people who are working in the mines or who are working in that sector also depend on women largely for their subsistence in those communities where mining is taking place. There are many challenges that women uh, face in the mining supply chain uh, right from examples of their participation in the sector either as part of formal employment into the mining companies or as entrepreneurs who want to go into artisanal mining as part of uh, the value chain or as women who want to provide services in terms of mine services to the companies who are in those areas. I'm a woman. I'm young. I would have to work with men. This is a business that has been conquered by men and it is assumed that mining is for men. They believe in a perception that when a woman is menstruating, she shouldn't, she shouldn't go to the site. It brings bad luck to the site. It's, it's, it reduces the production rate and all that. <laughs> And two betting a fee, and also a bad jumla was all the bedroom. The chiefs and the elders, when you are mining, they expect you to do a sacrifice by killing fowls and all that to purify the rivers because they believe that uh, when you do that, you get more production. Yeah, it will make the land fertile. Yeah, I'm office about me. It's in no bones and now I must start it. Hey. That kind of a, you know. And no, no, so sometimes I'm not having because as an anas a book, my bum. Almost it's you, my lord, new year. Yeah, no, yeah, crass can be a dear shade, my yakumano. I had a treachery form. And I said, You own ma, oh, my ye lord, no woman, any more, you know. A bang or bang, you could a so so near the two. And I answer ye, ye de ye. Om be two nin ye, nin ye an hour to hold. A boy over to me, sim bay two o'clock. Two o'clock on so baby, I can't be a coy, and all what time is so down. I was a we are time you do ya, not ye, Pamomo. 
there are also challenges related to the operations of mine that affect women in the communities where they live in. And so, for example, their right to land or even livelihoods are affected because once there's a concession that is given to a company and people are asked to move, women are largely the vulnerable group who lose their land, their farmlands, their homes, and they have to move to other places. And having access to land in communities where they are not coming from remains a significant challenge for women. You want to mine at a place, for instance, if your land is finished, where you are mining is finished, you want to go to another place. By the time you realize there's a block out, we don't get information about it. So by the time you realize the land has been taken over by the men. So you end up getting the land, but the land that you get will not be as rich in minerals as uh, somebody will get. Also, when I'm able to even get the land, sometimes I end up facing problem like some men come in and they bully, trespass on the land, mine the land with force. And we sometimes will even end up in the police station, in courts and all that. Meanwhile, I've, I have the legal license. Oxfam has been in the sector because we have a program which try to promote natural resource governance justice. And so making sure that the sector is done in a way that focuses on protecting the rights of people, making sure that the companies and the government are doing the right things in making sure that we maximize the benefit from our mining work. And to do this, one of our mission is that we work with others to bring about the change. Wacom is one of our key partners in terms of raising the voices of communities, challenging mining companies, and challenging the government of Ghana in terms of policy, implementation, and the protection of mining communities. Another partner we work closely with is the Friends of the Nation, based in Takura. They're also working with mining communities, similar to what Wacom is doing. Wacom has been in existence for 22 years, and uh, our objective is to ensure that community rights are realized and that mining should in no way deprive communities of their livelihoods and also to pollute the environment. FON, from what our mission statement is, and committed to empower women in natural resource sector, we facilitate dialogue among the women groups and the policy makers and regulators to unearth the concerns of Uber in the sector for address. We recognized that there was a need to give women those special place of getting them to realize their rights and also equipping them that they are capable of struggling. And uh, we didn't just go into this. We began with uh, a research to ascertain the effects of mining on women, the youth, and then also men. And realized that women, for instance, were formed about 3% of those who ever received compensation in the mining communities. The role that Oxfam plays also includes not just in Ghana at the local level, but also at the regional, continental and global level. So we are able to create spaces where we bring people from those communities that are affected into global governance spaces where issues of mining are discussed. The EITI, initiative, we call it the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. It's a global initiative that pushes for governments to report on certain transparency aspects of the mining sector. And so in Ghana, we have called ours the GETI, so the Ghana Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. And this is essentially bringing together all the stakeholders involved in this, government, civil society, communities, and the mining companies to come together and focus on issues of transparency in the mining sector in Ghana. So the conference or the meeting that we are having, which is more a multi-stakeholder meeting, is to come and talk about transparency issues in the sector, including issues that affect women and the disabled in Ghana, so that we capture what we report on. There is a whole series of dialogues that are taking place one, to understand the underlying factors for women's involvement in mining, that lessens women's involvement in mining. 
We've also looked at the policy regime, discussed it with EPA, Minerals Commission, etc., to see the implications of present policy regimes on women particularly. And we've also looked at getting gaiety to understand how women are not affected by some of the policies, though they've made a whole lot of suggestion, policy proposals, but the women are where they are. And we believe that through this engagement, women's concerns will be unearthed and heard and addressed. The EITI basically seeks to address the issues of underdevelopment um, and reduce conflicts within the extractive sector. For us as EITI, we think that uh, when we bring stakeholders together, I mean, you have a lot of ideas and fertilization of ideas. But the ultimate aim, aim is to ensure the promotion of uh, transparency, accountability, to promote development outcomes. The conference or the meeting, which is more a multi-stakeholder meeting, is to come and talk about transparency issues in the sector, including issues that affect women and the disabled in Ghana. We will urge all the authorities who are in charge that they should reserve some land for women. I think that would be the best solution for women doing mining. And it should be rich in minerals. It shouldn't be something that the women will go and struggle and struggle and lose money and struggle to, to, to before they mine. I said, "Mama, no more say mining crime. No man to me yet, man. Because so as no be better than a man so bad be yet, man. No na oh na do cry, do any way, do man a hard thing. I'm not nice. Policy, as it is that architectural policy have not captured women's involvement, and therefore policies have um, not really facilitate women's greater participation or enhanced participation in it. And there is more space for policy to capture pro-women uh, involvement in the extractive sector. We need to correct the misconception that it's outside that miners are criminals. We are um, spoiling the land and, and the water and a whole lot that is going going wrong. We need to correct that misconception. I will urge women who wants to get into mining to first of all be educated, understand that this is a, a business. Nanka, <laughs> <laughs>